Hi guys, Owen Davis here from Goldshade.com. I'm joined by Stuart from Bigger and we're going to talk about etiquette on the course uh, and what you should and shouldn't be doing uh, as you move around the golf course. Okay Stuart, so we're on the 18th tee here mm -hmm. at the, uh, on the Brabazon course at the Belfry. Um, I'm going to pretend I've hit a shot straight down the middle, but I've taken mm -hmm. a nice chunky divot. Mm -hmm. um, I always get confused whether I should be replacing divots on the tee mm -hmm. or, or just leaving them. Um, so what, what's the right way to go about things? Okay. On tees, don't replace divots. Yeah. Because it, what it does, it leaves an uneven surface, uh, an unstable surface, particularly for other golfers. Yeah. If there's a sandbox with some divot mix in, then use that, replace, um, put that in the divot hole, and then firm it down with your foot. That's the best thing to do. Yeah, and we can see here, there's, there's no sandbox actually mm -hmm. on this tee, but there is a lot of divots, but they're mm -hmm. all, they've all been sanded in, mm -hmm. and the greenkeepers will come round and, and do that for you, will they? They will do, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And in terms of um, just, you know, etiquette-wise, uh, moving around the tee, what should we be aware of as golfers? Okay. Just be aware of where you're parking your, um, your trolleys, yeah. and put in your equipment uh, because we want to try and reduce the amount of wear that um, a, a tees get yeah. because they, do, are, they can be very concentrated areas of wear. Yeah. So leave your trolleys off the tee yeah. and also be aware of where you're walking on and off the tee as well. Yeah. Okay, so in our fantasy world, I've hit one straight down the middle on the fairway. Stuart's uh, carved one into the bunker. We're going to go up there now and, and talk, talk about etiquette uh, at those two points of the course. Okay guys, we were at uh, Stuart Smith call shot in the bunker here. He needs to work on his uh, driving a bit. Um, could you uh, so explain a bit about, about etiquette in the bunkers, what we need to be looking out for as golfers, mm -hmm. and what's the right way to approach them uh, before we play our shots? Okay, when you, if you've gone in a fairway bunker, the one thing to do, as, as we've talked about before, is go and prepare yourself beforehand. Go and get the bunker rake that you're gonna use uh, to actually rake the damage that you're gonna make. Yeah. So, and also enter a bunker uh, at the lowest point as well. We, we, we mentioned this about, you don't wanna enter a bunker walking down a face because you're gonna create more damage. You're gonna damage the turf on the face as well. Yeah. And likelihood is you might hurt yourself. Yeah, so, so always enter at the shallowest point, yeah. um, so you don't, yeah, you're not pushing sand back down the face Correct, yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And, and you, in terms of getting the rake first, mm. I mean, it seems obvious, but uh, you know, loads of us do it. I know I've been guilty of not going and getting that rake, mm. hitting my shot, going, oh, where's the rake afterwards? Mm. And that's all to do with speeding up play, is it? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're prepared, you can rake it out and you can move on really quickly and keep that, that pace of play up, which is really important nowadays. Yeah, and obviously it goes without saying, uh, leave the bunker uh, as you'd expect to find it yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And also leave the rake in the bunker when you do it. So this, your advice is it is, I never know whether to leave it I outside, know. <laughs> inside or. I was, I, was like, I always like to leave it inside the bunker. Some people leave them outside. Yeah. Some people leave it half and half. Yeah. For me, my personal preference is leaving it in the bunker. Inside the bunker. Okay, we're gonna go over to my tee shot now, straight down the middle of course, and, uh, and talk about uh, what to do when you're in the middle of the fairway and the etiquette of dealing with that. Okay guys, so we found the middle of the fairway here. Um, Lots of divots, I see. Obviously mm -hmm. a very popular golf course, the Brabson here at the Belfry. Um, taking a divot out, quite a big one. Uh, what should we be doing? Obviously on the tee box, we just mm -hmm. left it because we didn't want to create uh, unstable footing. Mm -hmm. um, but what should we be doing as golfers when we take a divot on the fairway? Okay, you want to be replacing it as soon as possible because that will speed up recovery and that will, the, basically, once you've taken the divot out, get it straight back in again because otherwise it's going to dry out and it won't, be, won't repair itself and you're going to have a messy fairway. Yeah, I mean, uh, and what does it, what problems does it cause greenkeepers if you haven't replaced that divot uh, in terms of maintaining the golf course? Okay. It's going to be more work to actually, you're going to have to go out and repair the divots with the sand mix. And you're also going to have to keep the fairway clean of uh, old divots as well, yeah. which will get into mowers and cause damage to mowers. Yeah, and I've always, I mean, you mentioned this just a, a second ago, but um, quite often when we're out uh, golfing, we see an old divot that isn't maybe the divot we've created, we mm -hmm. go and put it back. I mean, is, mm -hmm. is that pointless? Is, it, it, it's it pretty. It's, once it's dried out, it's not growing back. It's done. It's, it's gone. gone. It leave is it, gone. Leave yeah. it and move on. Or move it to the side so it's out the way off the fairway. Okay. The other, the other thing is really important is try not to take any divots when you when you're having your practice shots. Yeah. Um, the less divots we have on the fairway, the better the fairway is going to play for everybody. And uh, also one other thing. I mean, obviously it's it's great when we create a, a nice solid divot that we can go and mm -hmm. fill back in. If we just create half a divot or a bit of a divot mm -hmm. uh, and the rest is disintegrated, should we just go and get that? And do the best we can with it. No, if it's if it's completely disintegrated, then there's no point. You'll be there too yeah. long, yeah. Uh, trying to put piece back 
everything like a jigsaw. Yeah. So I would suggest if it's only a small divot, if it's if it's disintegrated, then don't worry. Okay. Okay, guys. So we both found the fairway up there in our mythical uh, playing of this hole. Uh, sorry, the green up there. Uh, we're going to go up there and talk a little bit about etiquette on the green, what you should do uh, when you're on the putting surface. Okay, guys, we're on the 18th green here uh, on the Brabham course at the Belfry um, in our kind of mythical uh, fancy round of golf. Um, Stuart's knocked his bunk shot into about three inches there. Great shot. Thank uh, you. I've hit it three foot because I'm really good as well. Um, and we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, what we do on the putting green and things to mm -hmm. be aware of. And I think the first thing we probably want to start with is pitch marks. Pitch marks, um, yeah. So can you talk a little bit about pitch marks and uh, why they're so important to the maintenance of greens? Okay. Pitch marks are, are really damaging. They, if we don't repair them within 24 hours, They'll, the scar will last for weeks. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's one of those things that you need to repair them. And my rule of thumb is I'll repair mine and two others when I'm out on the putting green okay. because that way we're, we're maintaining the surface which, is, which will keep it nice and true and smooth for every other member and golfer who's playing the course. Yeah, and in terms of repairing pitch marks, the, the best way to do it, there's a right and wrong way. I mean, mm. uh, I, I've certainly been guilty of doing it the wrong way we're talking mm. about this. So if mm. you just explain what is the right way and what is the wrong way. Okay, the, the wrong way is to stick a pitch mark repairer in and then lift it up yep. because then you're just exposing the soil. What you need to do is you take your pitch mark repairer, put it in the sides and then push the actual sides of the, the pitch mark into the middle and then just gently firm it down with your foot or with a putter. Yeah, and, and obviously arriving on the green, um, there's, a, there's a certain amount of etiquette to, mm. to how we should uh, approach the green. Um, mm. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and why it's important? Okay, approaching the green is leave your clubs where you're going to be going. Uh, then try not to leave your clubs at the front and then you have to walk off the front edge of the green again. Yeah. We want to try and reduce that wear and tear on the golf course as much as possible. Yeah. So, and also make sure you're prepared before, for when you get on the green as well. Yeah, and obviously if there is a roped off, mm -hmm. uh, really respect those yeah. uh, green keepers that have put that for a reason. Absolutely, yeah, ground under repair, uh, roping off to sort of help traffic flow around the, around the golf course yeah. is really important and please observe those as well. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so Stuart, you've obviously knocked yours into uh, three inches but I'm mm -hmm. not going to give you that because I've seen your putt. Mine's about three foot away, so we're going to need to knock them in. Okay. So obviously the pin, being aware of what we do with the pin on the green, can you talk a bit uh, about that and, uh, and mm -hmm. why that's important as well? Okay, uh, really important. Um, these the flag sticks obviously are quite expensive to replace, yep. so we want to look after them, but they can do a bit of damage. So when you lift them out, make sure you lift them straight out so you don't damage the edge of the hole. Yep. Uh, when you're putting them down, Put them down nice and gently uh, so we don't damage the surface of the putting green yeah, as well. I mean, javeling them into the surface is obviously, we, we see that quite a bit yeah. and that's that's a no-no. Yeah, we have seen it. Some of, some of our members have seen some uh, rather strange things that have been done with flag sticks. Uh, yeah. One of my experiences was uh, we caught someone who lived on our side of our golf course using him to grow, run a beans up. Right, quite an unusual use there. Uh, great stuff. So there you go, guys. There's some information on what you should and shouldn't do uh, mm -hmm. on and around the greens and just something to be aware of uh, when you're next out there on the golf course.